Hi, I'm Tanya Martinez with Remax Real Estate Results and welcome to or welcome back to my channel where I talk on everything from personal finance to real estate to money mindset. And if you guys like those topics, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this video. So this video is about how to rent out your property. But first, let's talk about what kind of property you should look at if you are looking at barely buying a property. So typically what I recommend is a three bedroom, one and a half to two baths house or duplex. And I recommend to look around in that area, see what houses are going for. Also look at the rents the area has and how clean and desirable the area is. So you want something that is close to parks, close to schools, and also close to shopping centers. So make sure you're looking at those things when you're looking at putting in an offer for a home. A good rule of thumb is that your monthly mortgage payment is about 75% of the rent. So let's say you're renting a house out for a thousand. You wanna to try to get your monthly mortgage payment to be around 750. Like I said, that's a good rule of thumb, but I know house prices are a little bit higher right now. So if you end up being, you know, at 85%, that's also okay. But you know, you wanna to try to stick as close as you can to that 75% mark. Another thing to look at whenever you're looking at houses is that the house needs work, but not that much work. We're talking about paint, um, maybe flooring, maybe even a few toilets, but you don't want something that you're gonna have to take out cabinets, replace, you know, like the HVAC or the, the AC unit right away. Uh, the goal is to make money. So make sure you're looking at something that, you know, that probably just needs a little bit of paint, flooring, and you're good to go. And if you're looking to get a little bit more rent, in my experience, a lot of tenants like when you put new appliances, which not a lot of places put new appliances um, in their buildings. So that's always a plus that you have that. And you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot and easily buy, you know, like a new stove, microwave, fridge, dishwasher for pretty much under um, $2,000 if you're looking for, for deals, of course. And if you're gonna be buying new appliances, make sure you buy stainless steel. I don't know why, but people tend to like them better. And it just tends to bring in, you know, more of that high-end feeling compared to, you know, like an all black stove or even like an all white stove. So make sure you're getting stainless steel. And just a few other tips, uh, whenever you are going to go rent out that home, make sure that you don't have carpet. Carpet might seem like the cheapest way at the beginning, but it honestly ends up costing you more money through the life of that rental unit because you have to replace it more often. You actually have to clean it every time um, a tenant moves in or out, or even have to replace it if they have pets and the pets, you know, mess up the carpet. What I would recommend is getting a vinyl plank flooring because it is scratch resistant, waterproof, and it honestly, it looks a lot better and it's a lot easier to clean for your tenant. A lot of tenants really don't like carpet anyways, so why not just, you know, save yourself that headache of having to clean it and or replace it every time a tenant moves out. Another good rule of thumb is to make sure that everything is maintenance before someone moves in and go through the property, make sure that everything is up to date, up to code, and if anything needs to be fixed, make sure that you fix it. Okay, so now let's move on to looking for a tenant. Um, if you are not a realtor, you can post on places like Facebook Marketplace, any Facebook pages, Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com. All of those are good sites to find a tenant. Through Facebook, I will say you might get a little bit more spam or, you know, just people clicking that they're interested and sending it over to you and then never responding. But you'll be able to differentiate the people that are actually super secure or not pretty much right away. So I have actually done it both ways. One where I make them fill out the application before they can view it. And the other way was letting them see the house and then letting them fill out the application after they've seen it. To me, it honestly didn't make a difference between the quality of tenants. So you can choose whatever you want. And I know right now times are a little bit weird. So if you don't wanna do multiple showings, in the past, I've actually done like open houses where I let the people that are interested know that I'll be at the house from this time to this time. And then they can come on through and walk through the house and fill out the application there if they want. And that usually works the best if the house is vacant. So if there are still tenants in the house, 
house, then that's a little bit harder to get away with showings, but it's still possible. And if you can, if when the person shows up, kind of take a look at the car. I don't remember exactly where I heard this from, but if their car is clean, that's usually a good indicator of how clean they will keep your home. So make sure you look at the car whenever they show up to look at your house. And you know, you can do that or not do it. It's not necessarily a big deal. I will say though that my tenants are really clean people and they tend to take care of my properties and I did that beforehand. So basically do what you want with that information. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, and pretty much the last thing that you need to do when you're looking for your tenant and receive their application is to do a background and credit score check. There are usually local offices that can do that for you, but you can also look up different places online. Make sure they are reputable though. And once they pass the background check, they're pretty much good to move in if you feel comfortable with them. I always say that check your gut before you let anyone move into your house. If you get a bad feeling about that person, I would just say don't choose them. If you feel decent about that person, then I would say go ahead and let them rent it. But like I said, rely on your gut. If you get a shady feeling from a person, don't rent it out. That's all you've got to do. Don't rent it out. And make sure that you do house checks periodically. It's very important that you go through and look at the house every once in a while, even if it's just a drive-by. And I tend to go inside the house probably once or twice a year just to check up on the, on the actual condition of the inside of the home. And I'll give my tenants about a 24 hour notice before I actually do that. Okay y'all, so that was pretty much the end of this video. I hope you guys liked it. Please make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I hope this information was helpful. And once again, thank you so much for watching the video and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye!